Hey, welcome to the Morning Mix podcast. This morning, we learned a lot of you have very unique family heirlooms. It started with a Cadbury egg. Yeah, that nobody wanted to ago. eat. No we one thought that eat was it. weird. Yeah, yeah. It got so much weirder. Mm-hmm. Take off your socks and look at your bare feet right now <laughs> on the Morning Mix podcast. You've worked all day. You're exhausted. You walk in the door. You set your keys down. And the first thing you hear is, uh, so what's for dinner? Well, there are two ways this can go. One, your mind goes totally blank. You go to the pantry and try to see if there's anything you can put together. Or two, you just go, hold on a second. Walk to the front door, grab your box from HelloFresh, open it up, and have every ingredient you need to make a dinner you didn't even know you could make. And there's plenty to choose from with over 40 weekly recipes that suit your family's lifestyle. And speaking of lifestyle, spend less time in the car going from grocery store to grocery store looking for all the perfect ingredients. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting the best produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. In fact, we ordered one that had the freshest seafood and soup ideas, pasta ideas, things I would have never come up with on my own. So right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50MorningMix and use code 50MorningMix for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's code 50MorningMix for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. You've worked all day. You're exhausted. You walk in the door. You set your keys down. And the first thing you hear is, uh, so what's for dinner? Well, there are two ways this can go. One, your mind goes totally blank. You go to the pantry and try to see if there's anything you can put together. Or two, you just go, hold on a second. Walk to the front door. Grab your box from HelloFresh. Open it up and have every ingredient you need to make a dinner you didn't even know you could make. And there's plenty to choose from with over 40 weekly recipes that suit your family's lifestyle. And speaking of lifestyle, spend less time in the car going from grocery store to grocery store looking for all the perfect ingredients. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting the best produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. In fact, we ordered one that had the freshest seafood and soup ideas, pasta ideas, things I would have never come up with on my own. So right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50MorningMix and use code 50MorningMix for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's code 50MorningMix for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. Many people use the phrase all the time, especially people like you'll have a boss who will say this. Hey, y'all, we work hard, but guess what? We play harder this weekend. Applebee's drinks on me. And you're like, OK, thanks, John. Yes. For the first round. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as you're there between five o'clock and five o four. What? <laughs> but if you really work hard and play hard, they say You'll be more successful if you can find that balance. It's about the balance. So really, you need to not work hard and play hard, but just like work and play enough. That's what you need to do. And there you'll find more success, they say. But if you work hard and play harder, it's time to prove it. What do you do to play hard? Text it to us. 312-233-1019-708 is playing hard by gardening. Yeah. Let's Mm. go. Similarly, a 708 boats and hoes. So it just depends (laughs) where you're using the hoe. 630, I have an enjoyable four Manhattan night. Ooh, wow. That's four. intense. Four Manhattans, can you imagine the next morning? I can't do no. that. That's heavy duty. You've got to start early, though, so you yeah. can have sleep. That's just booze on booze. Wow. Mm-hmm. Good for you, 630. Taylor texted, I go bass fishing for 14 hours straight. <laughs> Boy, that is playing hard. Mm-hmm. Watch out. Yeah. I compete in couples women's tennis leagues. 612. Nice. Not bad, a good way. Yeah. 708, I play hard when I go to music festivals. Well, there's a big one this weekend in Douglas Park if you want to go to Riot Fest. 708, I drag race my car. No word on legally or not. Better than your underwear. I guess so. Oh, true. (laughs) So true. (laughs) I go to the dojo and I do a little MMA. I'm old and I get beat up. 630. I like that. (laughs) Play it hard. (laughs) How do you play hard? Mm. Just hit me. Just hit me in the face. Please. (laughs) Just do it. Uh, Let's see. 815, a campfire, some catfishing, and a cooler of beer. Now, I'm assuming they mean catfishing like actually fishing for not going online and being like, hi, I'm a 19-year-old. Like, wait, what? Yeah, maybe it's like the hillbilly hillbilly hand fishing. They go in and they just stick their fish in the catfish's mouth and pull it out. How do you play hard? 312, I play Call of Duty. Like that, get online, just play some games. 815, I rock out to Metallica while I light things on fire. Oh, Let's no. play hard. Yeah. Watch out. I like uh, it. Thanks, Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is totally right. <laughs> Watch out. All right. I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> We've got a garbage person here. After throwing trash for 58 hours a week, Friday through Sunday, I travel around the Midwest to ride roller coasters while drinking. 
Whoa. Now that is a way to blow some steam off. Yeah, That's right. how you play hard. 630 hookers and blow, by which I mean I watch three movies back to back and I take a nap. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. Same kind of thing. Cheaper and probably less risky. Yeah, probably. 630, with this count is playing hard, we pick a theme park and then we spend the weekend there, like Six Flags or Cedar Point. Yeah, 100% that, that counts. Good Sounds for you. Great. 224, I play hard, 18 holes of golf, 18 beers. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's worse Whoa. than the four Manhattan guy. Yeah, right. wow. I go camping and I take my golf cart off roading in the trails. That's kind of fun. I work hard, I work 70 hour weeks, and then I run ultra marathons in really cool places. It's kind of a cool way yeah. to blow mm-hmm. some, some steam off. And finally, how do you play hard? I'm in a cup in hand kickball league. What does that mean? It means you hold a beer the entire time. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice cup in hand kickball. I think we need to start a team. We should get in the mixed cup in hand kickball Yeah, team. It'd be like kind of fun. This. Today's variety of kickball. From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. You've got a very funny family heirloom. They've been passed through the generations. We've got a family in Scotland with a 50-year-old Cadbury egg has been passed from great-grandma to grandma to all the way down. Violetta's got a can of tomatoes. Yeah. About four years old, but she's hoping. She's starting mm-hmm. it. Yeah, she's, yeah. you got to start somewhere, right? right? Do you have a funny family heirloom? Hi, Dawn. Good morning. Good morning. Dawn, I just got myself one of these, and you've got a funny family heirloom. What is it? It is this horribly ugly faux suede jacket, and it was my grandmother's, and she was very sweet, and she tried to give it to me, and she said, oh, you know, I want you to have this. And I said, oh, Grandma, I have one almost like that, but I bet my sister Sue would really like it. (laughs) So then she gave it to my sister. And she's like, well, thanks. I couldn't say no. And then that, I don't know, that was early in the year. And then that Christmas, she wrapped it and gave it to me for Christmas. Oh, ah. no. So has it become and, a game of passing back and forth the faux so yeah, suede jacket? It's been going on for probably 20, 25 years now. Wow. Okay, I like Every this. Year. You can't remember who had it last. And, like, you <laughs> yeah. always are waiting, like, who's going to open the jacket? So, yeah, it's really funny. All That's right. Great. So Dawn and her sister have a faux, fade, uh, faux suede sorry, jacket that they're passing back and forth. I like that. Hey, John, good morning. Good morning. John, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, my man. What do you have? So my great-great-aunt made a back scratcher way back when, and she took a silver fork, some red twine, a little bit of wax, and a dowel rod just to get the job done. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. That is in the description. Uh, we all yeah, see it. I it's wish perfect. I had. I think I, I think you could sell this thing on Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a second. And now, how long have you had the homemade back scratcher, John? I've had it about 12 years now. Wow. And do you ever use it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. It's an heirloom. I've gone, I've gone with the cheap aluminum bare hand. It yeah. Works. Okay, yeah. I like that. All right, the homemade back scratch, but you can't use it. No. <laughs> guys, it's for, it's, for, guys, it's for fancy guests. you got to preserve it. you yeah. got to preserve it, right? Hi, Jane. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Jane, what do you have I'm- in the fridge? It's a family heirloom? Yeah, well, my dad has a can of Billy Beer. Billy I don't Beer. Know if, Billy Carter. Yes. Brother of Billy President Carter Jimmy Beer. Carter. Yep. Really? Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to do the math. It's either 50 or 60 years old. And uh, growing up, and I mean, I'm 57 now, but you are not to touch it. <laughs> You are not to do anything with it. It stays in that fridge. Wait, it's in the fridge? Yeah. <laughs> so it's been in the fridge for, for like 50 years. It's been. <laughs> That's crazy. I thought it was like a displayed no. somewhere. Yeah, or drained. It's just in a can. No one drank that. <laughs> no, don't touch that. Right. Has the can changed at all in time? Like, has the can, like, kind of shrunk? Like, you know how, like, a can can dent over time when it doesn't have the carbonation anymore? Or does it look pristine? It looks pristine. There has been no shrinkage. So, <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to drink it, but... Let's just say you decided one day, like, F it. Billy would have wanted it this way. And you open it. Does beer stay? There's no way it would be good anymore, right? Like, what would it? Oh, my gosh. What's the expiration Do we know date? if Billy beer was good in the first place? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. So President Carter had a peanut farm, and then his brother had a beer yeah. company? Yeah, I believe farm. his brother yes, was just so, yeah, yes. there it is, right. He was that's just kind of like a crazy, like, oh, that's my crazy brother kind of character, taking huh. advantage of Love being it. in the spotlight at the time, right? Well, Jane's got her dad's beer in the fridge. In the 
John had a, a family heirloom that was a back scratcher. But hi, Christina. Good morning. Good morning. Christina, when we said funny family heirloom, I was like, I don't know what we'll get. Maybe we'll get a back scratcher, maybe an old beer. <laughs> but Christina, <laughs> by God, what family heirloom do you have? So I have my grandmother's toenail. Let's go! Toenail. Come on. Yes! <sighs> Why do you so have your grandmother's have, yeah. toenail, Christina? So in our family, for the women, for some reason, like, we lose our big toenails. I don't know if it's because, like, we're all, like, either soccer players or softball <laughs> players. But it was a joke. Like, just randomly, our big toenails will fall off. So, like, my grandmother one year just decided to give it as a gift at mm. Christmas as a joke because mm. her toenail recently fell off. Sure. And so we've kept it. And now, like, our tradition now is whenever we mm. lose a big toenail, we send it to someone in the family. Woo-hoo! There's so many layers to that. It's not a clipping. It's an actual full toenail. So Full toenail. Full. And is it on display in the house? Is it? Did you guys have it shellacked and mounted? So it's in a little box. It's like... um. Uh, toe box? It's a toe box from Marsh. It's a, <laughs> it's a box from Marshall Field, and it's uh, currently on my mantle, and we just kind of pass it around. Hmm, you put it. You put it in yeah. the fridge. Yeah, put it in the fridge. <laughs> Preserve it. Preserve so, it. do you still have a toenail? Um, my currently, like right now, yes, I have both big toenails. <laughs> currently, um, my right big toenail currently just like it just grew back, but I did lose it about a year ago. So it's a fresh one. That's nice. You got a new one. Yeah, a new the one. new model. The new iOS, yep. if you will. <laughs> the updated, the updated <laughs> toenail for Christina. Boy, she was putting I, it off uh, for a while, but then yeah. she updated. She May I ask? I don't want to get too sad or anything, but is Grandma still with us? Unfortunately, no. So was the toenail, toenail on display at Grandma's funeral and or wake? It actually was. Yeah, of right. course. <laughs> In loving memory. You gotta love that. You're listening to the Morning Mix podcast. What was the song? that you had to look up because you couldn't figure out the lyrics. Let's start with Eileen. Good morning, Eileen. How are you today? Hi, good. How are you guys? We're doing all right. What song did you have to look up? Benny and the Jets by Elton John. (laughs) Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. What's he even saying? No idea. I can't figure it out. I'm looking at the lyrics right now. Something about a mohair suit. That's yeah, about yeah all something's I know. coming our Electric way. But boobs. everybody's yeah. like mums along with yeah. it. Yeah, he said Candy and Ronnie right there. Okay, <laughs> really? That's what they say. No, idea. but they're so spaced out, my man. But but Benny and, and the Jets. Jets. This is where you jump in because you yeah. know that. All right, Benny and the Jets on the list there, uh, coming in from Eileen. Hi, Denise. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? I'm very well, ma'am, <laughs> and I thank you for that. What song did you have to Google? You didn't know the lyrics. You had to look it up. Jumping Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. Whoa. Jumping Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a tough one to try to keep up with. What the heck are they saying? Yeah, I was born in a crossfire my, hurricane. I know that part. <laughs> okay, show off. My that's the only part. And I were, my coworker and I were talking about the movie Jumping Jack Flash. Oh with yeah, Goldberg. Is that with Whoopi? Yeah, yeah. Goldberg. And, um, <laughs> where she's sitting on the floor and she's going, Mick, Mick, speak English. We couldn't figure out what, so we googled it. Still couldn't figure it out. <laughs> All right. Can't figure out this one here. Denise is struggling with Jumpin' Jack Flash. Let's go here to Sue. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Hi, good morning. You didn't know the lyrics. You had to look it up, Sue. What was the song? It's part of that Do Leap and Elton John song. Cold Heart. It does sort of sound like he took his dentures out when he started singing. With a fear What's he saying? Did you ever figure out what he's saying, Sue? Um, something about being a better man than I am or something. Yeah. I, I still. That's par- Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we don't know the lyrics to Cold Heart by Elton John. I'm not sure he does. I, I wouldn't was... be surprised if every time he sings it, he says something else. I was picturing him and go, like going to bed. No hairpiece. No dentures. Completely different guy. <laughs> oh, no glasses. The glasses are off. <laughs> yeah, like, Glitter all over the floor. Yeah. <laughs> he, could, he could probably take a walk down yeah. the busy streets of London. Yeah, no like, one would even know him. Uh, was that Elton John? No. Right? No, it couldn't be. Does no. he have a hairpiece? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think know. so, probably. I think he was a lot balder 50 years yeah. ago than he is now, so yeah. that's a sign. Very interesting. And finally, Pam. Good morning, Pam. Good morning. How are you guys? We're doing very well, and we were all amazed that this isn't the number one song. Pam, what is the song you Googled the lyrics to? Billy Joel, We Did Not Start the Fire. We did not start the fire. <laughs> we did not start the fire. South Korea, Maryland, Maryland Monroe. Monroe. And you just get the last yeah, word. Yeah, you get to be the in a rap concert. You just yeah. shout the part that's <laughs> rhyming at the end. 
<laughs> How that is not the number one most lyrically searched song of all time, I yeah, don't know. But right. instead, it's Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. You guys want to know in pop music, which is sort of the game we play over here at The Mix. You got Billy Jean, number one. I Want It That Way, Backstreet Boys 2, Toxic 3, Bad Romance, Lady Gaga 4, and Uptown Funk at 5. Huh. Boy, okay. that's a lot of music to search through. That sure is. Hopefully, everybody this weekend, when you find yourself at that karaoke bar at 2 a.m., you're ready to go. It's the end of the world as we know it. Yeah. Oh, oh, yep, that yeah. would be enough. Because it's a yes. lot like this where yeah. you yes. listen to it and you're it's like, I, I, I'm not even going to try. Random stuff. Yes. Just random yeah. things. That's hard because it doesn't go together it doesn't make any per sense. se, right? Do you remember Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve 99 into 2000 when we all thought the world was going to end? Why, no okay. doubt tried to perform that song live. No. And Gwen Stefani tried to do it and they didn't succeed. No, wow. it's, it's I didn't part know way that. through it. She was like, ha, ha. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. It got rough. I kind of want to hear that now. Really? From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. Yeah, like yesterday, no joke, before we went over to Prospect High School, I was at my parents' house. My niece, Juliana, was there studying for a math test. Mm -hmm. She was straight up studying. She was getting ready to go for her math test. Math is, I think, the probably the toughest to cheat on, right? Because right. well, yeah. yeah, well, because you get the answer from your friend, but then right. you got to show, show the work. You got to show the work. Right. right. So then you're just doodling a couple X's and Y's in different places. And then your teacher walks by. You're a cheater. You're cheating, and I caught you. Mm. Ha ha! Get me now, copper. What? <laughs> right. And then you're like, this teacher maybe <laughs> needs a vacation. <laughs> Why are we? What, what are we cheating in the forties? Yeah. Why am I yeah. bootlegging <laughs> vodka as well? Like what? I've happening? seen you, <laughs> Slim. <laughs> You was cheating behind the building with Marco. Yeah. What? Hey, Kristen. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Kristen. Happy Friday, guys. Hi. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You're a teacher? So I'm not a teacher. Okay. I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I was um, teaching. I was doing an internship. I was teaching a summer school one year. Okay. And um, it was a creative writing project for sixth graders. I'm reading this story, and I am blown away. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I've, this is brilliant. I've got a prodigy. So I am 1,000% bragging about this kid to my colleagues as if I had any hand in this. But I'm like, you guys, look at this. This is amazing. And they were like, yeah, girl, that's Harry Potter. He just, like, legit so Harry Potter, like, the names and everything. So I haven't read Harry Potter at this point. So oh. that is unfortunately how I caught someone's plagiarism. How old was the kid? You said, like, fifth, sixth grade? Yeah, fifth, sixth grade. Yeah. You guys, he came up with names. Like, who comes up with Dumbledore? That's crazy. Look at this kid. I, I know. I was blown away. That is unbelievable. You're like, how do you say it? Hermione? Yeah. Her, Herman, Hermanine? I don't even know. <laughs> They're at Hogwarts? Guys, look at this kid. It's talent. I mean, that's a take. it takes a pair to do that, though. That's I what I'm saying. Yeah, Maybe the kid didn't that's understand the assignment. Yeah. And he also bold. almost got away with yeah, it. Right. Yeah, that is bold. Hey, Melissa, good morning. Good morning. Your husband is a teacher, is that right? Yeah, we both are. Oh, so, fantastic. Okay, great. And there yeah. was some cheating caught. Yeah, so he noticed a student had uh, their study guide like under their computer, and he's like walking around, and he noticed it was, um, you know, the wrong study guide for the test he was taking. So the kid took the test, failed it, and he goes, hey, you know, what happened here? And the kid's like, oh, I, I thought I really studied, and goes to him he's like well maybe you should use the correct study guide next time you cheat yeah <laughs> ouchie yeah. sucker and your husband saw it happen but let it happen <laughs> oh yeah yeah i oh, love yeah. that i, mean, I love that like, i mean it, it it's just like a moment you like you dream of almost <laughs> <laughs> exactly this is going to be a teachable moment that's a great it really yeah. is oh my god the dream okay i love that so her husband catches the kid with the wrong study guide and lets him fail i like that mm-hmm Hi, Diane. Good morning. Good morning. Diane, you are, you teach second grade? I do. I teach second grade. Um, so they're seven and eight years old. And we take a weekly spelling test on Friday. And I had one little boy a few years ago that would write the spelling words on the bottom of his shoe. So then when we would take the test, he would, you know, cross his legs so he could see his shoe. <laughs> But what he didn't realize is he would go out to recess prior to the test, so oh. then it would get all streaked. So he would still write the words and spell them all wrong because all the words were washed off. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Like, 
blend together. Oh, that is so actually he's just adding he letters. Himself, I guess. Yeah, he learned on his own. Yeah. That's actually really kind of sweet. You know, that's hilarious. I know. I, know. I couldn't come down too hard on him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, testing one two one two. Sound check. Sound check. This is Nikki Sound Check on the morning mix. So we're gonna start with uh, the artist who runs the world, and I, I'm gonna admit right now, like I might need help with this because I, uh, I I'm not like the, the Swifties of the Swifties. Like they know everything, and there's so many details. You know what I mean? That I try to keep up on, but like it's yeah. it's so. Big. Yeah. I've seen that Swifties are so hardcore. There are people that are like, oh, I'm a Swiftie. And then deep cut Swifties are like, prove it. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. can yeah. I just be a Swiftie? Right. right. You don't want to even say that unless right. you're unless... really sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I do know. And if you want to fill in any blanks, feel free. So the, you know, the Eras Tour movie, we know all about that. It went yeah. on sale. It's sold out. Now, here's what I'm still kind of a little blurry on. Is it still only that really limited runtime? Like, it's not, it's only available through, like, early November, I believe. They were talking about extending it beyond. Right, but, but I, I that's what I'm seen, not sure uh, of. heads or tails that they are. So, anyway, if anyone texts us, that's a huge Swifty, and you know this 100%. I, I just don't want to report inaccurately, because I'm too busy telling you about all the money she's making with whatever the release is yeah. at this point. So, Barbie opened up uh, $155 million that weekend. So, that first weekend, obviously, we've been talking about Barbie nonstop, biggest mm-hmm. movie of the year, blah, blah, blah. Tons of promotion. I mean, we were promoting Barbie two years ago. You know, yeah, but sure. it's unbelievable. <laughs> yep. or a glimmer in Barbie's eye. So uh, now the Era Tour movie, we kind of just found out about that, right? Era's Tour, she says, okay, you couldn't right. make it to the show. You want to go to the theater. You can see this movie. Um, so far, it is on track to have a $100 million opening. Wow. So this movie that was just announced, potentially limited release. Do you have, a, have you gotten any follow-up I, on that? What I have here is that Cinemark announced that you can actually reserve one theater for your own group. Okay. Up to 40 people, Whoa. 795 bucks plus taxes and fees, roughly 1989 per person. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that was the that was the, the ticket price that came out. But yeah, so this is they're just talking opening weekend of 100 million dollars. So that's October 13th, just right. that weekend. I, so, but I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. And I think it's only wow. going to the beginning of November. Right. So right. If, if she decides to extend this, it could break the Barbie record. Of, Let's do it. You know what I mean? Do it. Never I think know. She should. Yeah, why not? I also did see for real, by the way, uh, Taylor Swift would get eight percent of the presidential vote were she to run. I'm not joking. <laughs> I totally believe this. Right. Eight eight percent doesn't seem like enough, right? But, it's but still, it could be for real. I'm okay. not even joking. That's more than Ross Perot would get. And, and well, kind true. of in line with that, so you know, we know Taylor as a, a musician, obviously, but two movies, by the way, that were scheduled to open October thirteenth. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we'll see you later. Yeah, exactly. yeah now we're good. Peace we're out. Good. Nope. Yeah. Uh, what what happened in that third eye blind documentary? Yeah. They they delayed the yeah, third eye blind documentary. Oh, yeah. Because their story has yet to be written, Chris. Oh, they, yeah, they need to include uh Wheat and Rib Fest in there. And right. then they will uh, be able to start editing. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, actually changing movie openings, breaking records, uh, the tour that we all may or may not have seen. You know, it's kind of crazy. I also saw something where her folks are actually the, like, head producers on the movie, and they kept it. They, like, they she owns the movie. They mm-hmm. own the movie. The family does. It's not like it's Paramount Pictures or Disney or Fox Century, whatever. Like, no, they're smart. They're going to get all of it. Yeah. They own all of us. Isn't that crazy? They do. <laughs> they own us too, yeah. and, and they're at every show yeah. of hers. Yeah. Her mom gives the backstage tours. You know, it's it's, it's, crazy. A, it's a lot, a lot. I heard Taylor's thinking about buying the mix. She's going to call the only, Are you kidding me? That'd be yeah. the best thing that ever happened. That would mean yeah, you guys a lot, aren't, actually. Yeah, you guys aren't playing me enough, right. and so I'm just going to buy you. All right, and then the other thing, you know, so here we're talking about uh, millions and millions of people going to see this movie. Uh, we had under a million people watch the Video Music Awards uh, yeah, on sure, MTV, but... which I can't believe. It was actually pretty good. Yeah. But I, you know what? I do kind of think it's like Crying Wolf, right? For so many years, we were like, you don't play music. Right. I don't want to see this. And then I they am... actually have a great year, and we're like, oh, we missed it. Right. Um but this was one of the performances. So it, the whole show went on well over it, what it was supposed to, an it's hour and a half over. still on it's in still some on. markets. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, and this was one of the premiere performances, uh, Tomorrow by Together. So K-pop band, huge. Uh, yeah, they, they were, were Lala. here. They, yep. Lala. they met with McCabe and Jenny. There's an interview on Mix uh, YouTube at 109 Mix Chicago. And they debuted this brand new song with Anita, another big winner at the VMAs. And it was the very first performance of the song. They released it that night. So, I, you know, since... Not a ton of people got to see it. No, let's do it. <laughs> I thought we'd like let everybody enjoy it. This is uh, Tomorrow by Together with Anita. It's called Back for More, and it was on the VMAs, and now it's on Soundcheck. It's Mixmaster V and her mixology. Cocktails for you and me. Please join us. 
On Facebook at 1019 Mix Chicago. Yes, thank you for joining me. Like you said, Nikki, last week we went to Perry, we and now we're getting very green because I want to go old school with a classic that many people have heard of and a lot of people are afraid to try, the grasshopper. Ooh. Yes, we are going back in time. This was a very popular drink back in the day. Whip will have more history for us later with details. Um, this is made with creme de menthe, mm-hmm. right? Is that how you say it? Creme de meth. <laughs> yes. Different drink. Yeah. Cream of meth. Different. The the reason we are making this today is because this is the main ingredient and it is National Creme de Menthe Day. Oh, I wondered. I was like, yes. what is the connection? Exactly. Now we know. And I'm excited because I always assume it has to be blended. Like an oh. ice cream well, drink. back in the day they did not have blenders. So I found the OG recipe. Wow. Which is just um, creme de menthe, creme de coco, um, a little bit of, uh, or a lot of bit of whipping cream. Okay. Wow. And that's pretty much it. And then we top it off with a little mint. It's supposed to go in a martini glass mm-hmm. with a little chocolate shavings on the side. Ooh. I did not go extra today, and there are no chocolate shavings. And two of the glasses are coupe because I couldn't find another martini glass. <laughs> so we're making the best out of a Friday as we yeah. can. It's been a long week, people. So we coupe. Um, I love this. I'm really excited because, you know, no one wants to make a blender drink. Exactly. And I, I will tell that. you, so the guys at uh, the liquor store were helping me get ready and get all the materials we needed for it. The last comment they made to me were, good luck to your stomach. Oh, <laughs> oh great. I, I don't love that. know why, but I'm going to mix this up and uh, then say bye to you guys. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. My goodness. Peacing out on a yeah. Friday. <laughs> wow. We'll see you later. <laughs> Adios, amigos. Right. Whip, what were you guys yeah. in history for? Oh, us? I have so much. A grasshopper is a sweet mint flavored after dinner drink. The name of the drink derives from its oh. green color, which comes from the creme de menthe, a bar in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Two Jags claimed the hey. drink was invented <laughs> like the both of us. by <laughs> its owner, Philip Guichet, in 1918. By the way, Two Jags, still there. Hey, Bobby Boucher. Yeah, that's right. Bobby Boucher invented it with a couple of friends that he called the Two Jags. No, it's Two Jacks, I think, actually. But okay. it's still there. And it's uh, this drink became popular in the 50s again. Prohibition squandered the growth and familiarity of many cocktails born just before Prohibition. The original recipe calls for three ingredients to be combined in equal parts, resulting in a cocktail that looks like melted mint chocolate chip ice cream and kind of tastes like it, too. The rich green-hued dessert cocktail became a mainstay at bars during the disco era, while in contemporary times, bartenders have upended the core blueprint, creating and clarified grasshoppers, grasshopper milkshakes. Whoa, I can smell it. Other playful riffs on the Man. riffs on the flavorful classic. There yeah, it is. We're taking it back. Baby. Okay, look at this. Okay. It does look mint chocolate chippy. The yeah. smell. Yeah. Folks, we have smell vision right now at 1019 Mix Chicago on Facebook. Really get in and sniff that phone because you are going to get a big old whiff of this mint. Just punched me in the face with a yeah. loose glove. Holy cow. Now I'm going to throw some more Just mint right on top. Mint on you top. like your mint slapped? Yeah. I- <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Gotta slap all those flavors out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also, I'm excited. This cream has been in Violetta's purse for the last six <laughs> hours. <laughs> Look at that. It's she very gave whippy. You the biggest one. For yeah. the first time, I'm not going to totally fight for this. Whoa. All right, here we go. Thank Can you. The, if I wanted to make it at home, could I throw a scoop of uh, mint chocolate chip Ooh, ice cream yes, in there? Yes, you could. Get and even wild? like Nikki said, you can throw this in a blender with some ice, and then that like chocolate chip ice cream would melt in there. Wow. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Happy day. To the OG right. cocktail, the grasshopper. We've talked about it, and we've never tried it. That's right. Let's go. Mm. Oh, God, that's good. It actually is really yeah. good. That There's is no delicious. Joke. Dessert. No this joke. is dessert. Oh, I want the God. FCC to Done. know. Yeah. No alcohol in the studio. Mm-mm. Except for the stuff we're drinking. It is so no. delicious. Right. So oh supper God. clubs, a lot of supper clubs will make this drink and they actually will oh. like do this and pour it over ice cream and you so you get your booze and your dessert at the like same time. Like an affogato, but with a grasshopper. Exactly, yeah, yes. Like. And this would be how I mean this is great on its own. I'm Put just, some can ice we cream. Chug it? There's like very low ABV, so chug it. Mm-hmm. Is that what mm. it is? Your stomach will hate you with like all the it. heavy cream, but yeah. yeah. You really, she just pounded it. Mm-hmm. Eat the mint. Look oh, at yeah. her. That's so good. She slapped the mint oh my and ate God. it. She did. Whoa. I did slap it hard. I love that. I really love that. Somebody said, hey, guys, perfect timing. We're halfway to St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. I know. The nice thing about this drink is you don't have to brush your teeth afterward. Mm-mm. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, I kind of think I outdid myself. It's a simple recipe that you're going to enjoy for dessert. It's really good. And Very they say tasty. you can have it all like at all points of the day. <laughs> and at her teeth. <laughs> like that right now. Just li- like this, she just opened the door to she every really time did. we walk by. Like, Violetta is so minty. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so good. Fresh breath.
Folks, okay. that is a little thing we call V's Mixology, a Cheers. new fresh cocktail for you. The V Grasshopper. It's V Minty. Hop into it. Go check it yeah. out at 1019 Mix Chicago on Facebook. All right, thank you for joining us for the Morning Mix podcast. Make sure you rate, review, like, and follow this podcast. You can also follow us on social at 1019 Mix Chicago. And we will see you tomorrow on the Morning Mix.